Abomani or Pamiri, Edibo, or Pamiri Zapa, or Pamiri Munduka, or Pamiri Gedi, or Pamiri Kakari, the Wehelewa, the Wehli Kokokonu, Kokokonu, the Wehli Kobo Kobo. Abu Wa Molemo De Wa Mosha Wa Momesemi. Depending on the time you are listening to this um, video or attending this class. My name remains Omaumi Bode Ekundaya, the National Coordinator of Opamiri Language Development and the composition of a national dictionary for the Opamiri language. Having watched my maiden edition or my maiden outing, uh, some people asked a lot of questions, you know, via my email and WhatsApp, etc. And I may not be able to respond to all of them, but in the course of this class, I will respond to each and every one uh, of them. I thank you all. Now, let us go to the historical perspective. From time immemorial, we were one. Although the name of Pamiri was not what we were bearing. We came or migrated from different parts of Nigeria, actually. The main migrations were from Ife, Ife civilization, and the Benin Empire civilization. We migrated from Ife, sometimes we migrated from Ife to Benin, and from Benin, we migrated down to Akokuedo. My, the migrations took place in three historical epochs. What do I mean by that? I mean in three historical periods. The first migration from the Benin Empire took place during the Ogiso era, specifically during the last Ogiso, who the Benin people called Ogiso Owodo. This was around the 10th, the 9th, and the 10th century AD, well over 1,000 years ago. There was something that happened in Benin. Eight time people migrated from the Benin Empire, something occurred. Something happened. There was an animal, a monster. The name of the monster is also gone. Something like uh, a dinosaur or dragon, you know? Dragon was killing people, and so people were migrating. According to the Ewala people of Imogad, the man called Ewa, who ran away, meaning Ewala, that is, Ewa has run. You know, according to this oral story told me, Ewala and his people ran from Benin to escape the monster Osoga, who was killing people. This was a long time ago. And they went round and round and round till they came to settle in a place called uh, Ukotako in Imoga. Then, unfortunately, another monster was killing them there. This was a fire spitting dragon, was killing them again. So they, they came down to where uh, it's called Ilabu. And from Ilabu, they came to back of Ethia. Well, those who are from Imoga uh, will relate to the story I'm telling now. Let's leave that for later discussion. And then many other people came. After that, during the time of Oba, Eware the Great, Eware the First, the one there now is Eware the Second. During the time of Eware the Great, a lot of things happened in Benin. Eware the Great was very strong. He was a warrior. You know, as were very strong there, they had the power of life and death. And so I think somehow he lost two of his children, two of his sons were poisoned to death. And in anger, he decreed that no man should sleep with his wife for some time. I think it was for two or three years. Imagine that kind of a decree that you shouldn't sleep with your, your lovely wife for some years simply because the other had lost two of his children. That incensed people and they started migrating. That was the time people moved east, south, west, and north from the great Benin Empire to Isoko, to uh, Urobo, uh, to Esan land, to uh, some of them to Esan land. So the other major migration was in the time of uh, the greatest of Benin monarch and conqueror named Oba Ozolua. This was between 
the 15th and 16th centuries, the one of us all was about the greatest. That was when Akure, which became Akure, was founded, was uh, became named that way. Uh, one of his sons came to, to, to establish uh, Idoane. One of his sons called Ani established Idoane, you know, and uh, the Deji of Akure was actually from Benin. His name was Udezi, which became Deji of Akure. And of course, all those that are called Ido, Ado, are all Edo name. It's just nativization of the pronunciation of Edo to Ido Ikiti, Ado Ikiti. We call it Udo, or we call it Edo, or Ado. So when you hear names like Ido Ani, mean, that is Edo of Ane. So when you hear uh, Ado Ikiti, that is Edo of Ikiti, and all that. So Ozolua was a very ruthless conqueror. In fact, it was said, history said that it was so ruthless that when people heard that Ozolua was coming to attack them, people started committing suicide on their own because what is going to be left in any community that he attacked? He will finish all of it to the smallest hand. And so people didn't want to experience the, the siege or attack of Oba Ozolua. So at that time, people migrated. We were all in one place. Not quite one place, they were just crossers of settlements. We were not far away from each other, those who came around. Right from Idoani down to Ifira. The story is told of, uh, of some warriors who left Ife for Benin. And later on, maybe at that time, I think, yes, at the time of the Ozolua reign, they left Benin for Akoko Edo area. They were um, Oga. Olumo, Akwese, uh, the one who established Echo, and then the one who established Afeye, um, right? And Unagogo, who established Umagogo, and uh, Hunter Igade, who established Igede Kiti, you know, and, uh, and in addition to many others, they left the Benin Kingdom around 15 something during the reign of Ozolua and his uh, children descendants. They left there and they came. They stayed in different places. They stayed in Idoani, the Lakose people stayed in Idoani, even the Moga people, they stayed together. And then they moved down to the Ishua area. Then they moved down like that, like that, until they settled between the zone between uh, Afeye and Lakose and Imoga, that zone. There are other variations, you know, other variations have emerged, but this is the one, you know, this is the first, I would say, right? I may be wrong, but the variations are still similar. It establishes the point of the migration from either Ife or Benin down to Akoko Edo. So it was Akpese who established Ila Akpese. Ila Akpese means two things from what I have gathered. It means uh, Ile Akpese, that is settlement of Akpese. Eh? Or Mila Akpese. Mila Akpese, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I Bese and, and this like that. Those were the two minutes that oral tradition, you know, gave me. But the story is also told that before Oga arrived in Moga, the Ewala people had been there already and they have had some civilizations. But the stories are there that some other people have had some semblance of leadership, monarchy in Ewala, side and all that. But it is actually Oga who came because of his uh, dynamism, the, the, the area was now named after Oga, Uma, Umaga. We, we, we look at all this, we look at Makeke from Ukeke or Manukeke. We had the Opamere Kingdom up to where we call Oumana Aka in Kogi State. Do you know that up to where we call Oumana Aka, those areas of Obeira or Kenwe, up to a part of okay, um, Ihima, where Okamere Kingdom, that is why we call that place Ohumanaka, which in, for those who understand the Igbo language, Ohumanaka means that popular Imoka Oma market that we are talking about, Ohumanaka. But the colonialists came and uh, did uh, fake imaginary boundaries and cut us 
cut our land away just like that. You know? we'll, we'll give the details, you know, later. So we're in one place. We're doing things together. From Idu and it down to the way I have described, there was one lingua franca, and the lingua franca was a mixture of Edo and Yoruba. So we actually understood each other then, even though there were different people who came from different parts, Ife, Benin. But these people that migrated from Ife and Benin were speaking one lingua franca. A lingua franca emerged, and the lingua franca was Edoid and Yoruba. Many of Edo words up till today and many of Yoruba words up till now. So we actually, a long time ago, the Uneme people, the Doani people, the Echwa, it was actually Echwa, we will give the meaning later, which is now Ishwa, Ishwa people, Ifira people, you know, down to where you have the Ebune, Afeye and Ebune, then the Ibilo, down to Imoga, to all the places that there was one Nigua Franca, I will understand one another. But again, three things scattered that conglomeration of ancient people. The first one, you know, some people thought it was war, inter-tribal inter inter war. It wasn't really inter-tribal war as such, although inter-tribal war contributed immensely to the scattering and dialect dialectalization of the Okamiri language. But what play played the most prominent role is the festivals that Okamiri came with or designed when they had arrived. The festivals and celebrations that led to the splitting of the Okamiri people into many villages and towns in the area we know as Okamiri land today and even beyond, the festivals are one the Orimi, Erimi festival, exclusively for men. And then there is a counterbalance for women, which is the Oke festival. Orimi festival or Erimi festival is a festival of men, is a festival of singing and dancing and uh, sarcasm. Innuendos, it was uh, a dramatic poetic and prosaic performance all put together to showcase talents, to entertain people, to criticize and reform society. Then there is okay up till now for the women, just the same thing, the women sing, they dance, they dress well, they showcase fertility, they show, showcase beauty and womanhood. But Orimi in the main scattered or primary people into different towns and villages. How? Now it was also a festival of strength and value. Wherever uh, the Ekwaso grade, because they had different grades from the Ant grade to the uh, Rat grade and to the Ekwaso grade, the Ekwaso grade are youth. And whenever they were graduating, or graduating out of a course of grade, they will be sent into the forest to kill dangerous animals. First, it was dangerous animals like boa, like tiger, like uh, beasts. Don't say beast. You kill and brought the head home, or you brought everything home. Then you are declared a man of value, a man of strength. But over time, that was no longer possible. They changed it to uh, bringing or catching a squirrel, squirrel, a rodent life, ground squirrel, tree squirrel, flying squirrel, and then what we call ava, uh, bushfowl, partridge alias bushfowl. A man was required, of Orimi, was required to catch one and bring back home to prove strength, to prove smartness, to prove value. They were using that to treat them for smartness and strength in war. So it had a value, but unfortunately, there was a condition. It, it was either you got it or you didn't come back to the community. It was a taboo. So up till now, when the Imoga people are doing all of the festival of songs and dance and poetic rendition, there is a song that they usually sing. I sang this song, and there is a mighty um, 
tree hollow, very mighty stump of tree, very big, like a bus, like C20 bus that will be beating, it will be beating it. And there's one song they always sing, or we always sing, is and the song goes like this. That that is if I don't catch, I will not come back. If I did not catch, I will not return to this place. That refers to that tradition of catching ava and squirrel. And that was what dispersed a lot of our family people to different villages, even beyond to Bogoro, to Kene, to Ihima, to Obeira, to Okenwe, to many places around, to Ishua, to Ekbeme, and all of them like that. That was the major, major dispersal of the Opamiri people. Before we now begin to talk about the um, intertribal wars. Then, of course, the second factor is uh, intertribal war and the invasion at different times of uh, the Ejama, Nupe, Fulani people. That contributed a lot to dispersing our people to various places, even outside Akoko Edo. Now, the nature of the Nupe invasions is of a kind, of a kind because uh, it wasn't a direct war between your primary people, you know, between your primary warriors and the Nupe warriors, the Fulani warriors, who were, they were, they were coming for slave raids in the time of slavery. Even before the coming of the white uh, people, they had always been there. They had always been a bugbear, nightmare to the Opamiri people coming to just invade. You were in the farm and they just came with their caravan. They passed on you and your children. You had to use your number six, your wisdom, to allow your children to go. You know, you, they, they will stylishly, stylishly tell their children to, to go and fetch water. Meaning, go and fetch water for... Uh, as strangers, you know, they had come along with it, they themselves are tired, they have, they, they want to eat. So you pretended that you were sending your children to go fetch water and food for, the, for your august strangers. And you add as they are going, that is, go and fetch water for strangers. Pass the go home. That was how we used to free our children. And so because of these raids and other people fighting the Opamiri people, uh, Yoruba neighbors from Owe, Kaba, and other were coming. The Igbula people were fighting. Uh, people from Mesaka were coming, and so on and so forth. Because of that, our people, you know, ran to the mountain tops. If you check, we have more numbers of Opamiri towns and villages that are uh, mountain varieties, Tomorika, uh, Ube, all of them, Makeke. It, it was for safety. It wasn't as if they were. They had been. They were always there before. We were in the mainland. We were all together in the mainland, distance apart. And at this time, we were not this many. The villages were not this many. So it was in 1840 that the Opamiri people came together and raised an army to confront the evasions, the series of evasions of the Nupi Gambari Fulani people. They wanted to take the war to their doorstep, to their villages, to their huts, and they wanted to deracinate them, annihilate them. They were actually marching forward when the colonialists, the white men, the soldiers of the white people who were coming from the northern part, you know, accosted them around Lokoja. But, well, as history will have it, the colonialists intervened and begged your family soldiers that no, 
that the time of inter-tribal wars were over and that they should go back. And they made a promise. There was a promise that they were going to put the headquarters. What they did in Logoja, there was an agreement that it was going to be done in Inuga. But it was never done. This the history, this, this is the history I've gathered. It was never done. So, so don't miss this class. Stay tuned. Subscribe. Love. Like and share. Let it get to your children. Especially when I will start teaching the language proper for my next class.